Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to cover a story about uh, Warner Brothers Discovery and has DC found its Kevin Feige. So without further ado, let's get into the story. Arrowverse co-creator Greg Berlanti may be the person to shepherd the DC Extended Universe into its next phase. So let's talk about this article. Now it says, let's face it, it's been hard to be a DC fan and I'm gonna agree with you there. Uh, there's not been a lot of great stuff coming out from Warner Brothers recently. Uh, of course they had, they, they did the superhero movies first. They did Superman, they did Batman, uh, they did the Dark Knight trilogy, which was phenomenal. And uh, then we had Zack Snyder and he's been, I would say a polarizing individual uh, in DC at best. Um, yeah, some people liked his stuff and some people really didn't like his stuff. So uh, on the whole, I don't think you want a individual like that who's deeply polarizing. You want someone who brings in the majority of people and that's, that's probably a better uh, approach. So um, maybe Zack Snyder is not the, not the guy for this kind of job. Now the franchise, according to this article, seemed to be settling into a groove. I wouldn't call it a groove, I would call it a rut. Uh, by releasing movies that were only tangentially connected to each other, like Shazam, which was okay. I mean, it was an entertaining movie, but it wasn't a very serious movie. That's all right. Uh, every once in a while to have just a sort of a comedic movie, but I didn't really feel like it did tie to any kind of greater DC universe. And for that matter, um, I wasn't excited for any kind of sequel or anything afterwards. And I'm, I know there's a Shazam sequel coming, but I'm still not really excited for it. Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey was terrible. I hated what they did with Harley Quinn and they made her this, uh, I don't know, this kind of a goofball character instead of a serious, um, intelligent, uh, highly intelligent, psychopathic woman that she actually is. Now, I'm not saying she can't be a little bit goofy or have a little bit fun, but at the same time, uh, this was just not the Harley Quinn that I had seen in previous movies and I did not enjoy it. Uh, or movies that aren't connected at all, like of course The Joker, which is a standalone movie, but a phenomenal movie nonetheless, and The Batman, which was also, in my opinion, a very, very good movie. I actually really enjoyed it. It's a long movie, but boy oh boy, I actually really, really enjoyed it, and I did not think I was going to enjoy that movie at all. Now, recent developments have only complicated things, and of course they're talking here about David Zaslav and him coming in and cut, cut, cutting everything. I mean, he killed Batgirl dead. It looks like Supergirl, yeah, that film is gone too. Now, um, it looks like those actresses may actually get other projects or be folded into other movies, which I say great for them. Uh, great move by Warner Brothers. If they had faith in these people to begin with and they think they're good actors and I have nothing against any of these uh, actors or actresses, you know, really most of this, in my, in my opinion, most of the fault on, on the Batgirl movie lies with the person who wrote the script and had all these ideas for all this woke crap and decided to try and insert it in there instead of, again, trying to create some sort of storyline um, with, <laughs> with an actually like a good story and good characters and good character development. And then you kind of kind of throw some of that social messaging in like after the fact if you want to, but it doesn't need to be the focus of the story. Uh, they certainly did try to cram a lot of it in there and that was concerning. Um, however, it is not clear that even Zazlab wants this chaos to continue for long, right? In interviews and announcements, Zazlab has been explicit in his desire for a figure to shepherd DC projects, much like Kevin Feige does for the Marvel projects at Disney. And he even specifically said that he would basically have his uh, organization set up exactly like Marvel, where instead of it, Iger and uh, Horn and Feige, it would be Zaslav and Horn, who Horn has been brought on back on to Warner Brothers. So it would be uh, Zaslav, Horn, and someone else. The question is, is that someone else Greg Berlanti? While nothing official has been announced yet, a recent event wrap-up published by Variety did offer an interesting tidbit. Arrowverse co-creator Greg Berlanti has been loudly whispered as a possibility for the role. But what is the reality of this? What is the possibility of this? Look, here is my opinion on Greg Berlanti. Now, I enjoyed Arrow. I enjoyed the Arrowverse. I enjoyed Flash. But I'm going to be honest, I only enjoyed the first maybe about three seasons of The Flash and maybe about the first three to four seasons of Green Arrow. And after that, I was just 
tired and bored with it. it got very repetitive. It, it just wasn't interesting anymore. Hell, I even watched the first season of DC Legends of Tomorrow and that show was not great. I didn't watch another season after that. I was I was done. I thought there was potential there and I did like the, oh, what is his name? I did like the villain that they had. So yeah, the villain from the first season was Vandal Savage and I actually... I did like him as a character. I thought that had some interesting potential, but honestly, I don't even know if I made it all the way through the first season. I don't think I actually made it here to the end. And and I don't know if this guy even made it to season two or not. I honestly don't remember. Look, it's 2016 when I watched this, so that's a long time ago. All right, so getting back to the point of this, is Greg Berlanti really the guy? And is he the guy that we should be going to? Well, look, I... At this point, I'm just going to say no. I'll just flat out tell you what I think. I don't think this is the guy. And here's why. Because, first of all, yes, Arrow was good. And yes, Flash was good. But let's face it, Legends of Tomorrow wasn't great. And let's face it, the last four or five years, everything on the CW that was related to any kind of superhero was terrible and let's not even get into bat whammon that thing was so horrendous i can't even believe they actually gave it a second season and then they did and yeah that thing was horrible uh super woke as fuck but it was not good story driven good character driven uh storytelling in the end greg berlanti has a history of creating a universe but on television which doesn't exactly translate to experience doing the same thing in movies let's face it these are two different formats you know one is a 30 minute to an hour long format you know it's serial it's going to be serial storytelling and it's not the same as a movie where you've got two and a half hours to tell a crafted story and that story has to be completely encompassed and it has to be a complete story in and of itself where it can stand alone. But if you're brilliant, then you can tie some of that little pieces of that story into the next one, into a broader story, which is exactly what Marvel did with phase one through three of the Marvel Universe. And that's why people enjoyed it so much. It seems to be less now because, well, in my opinion, the Marvel Universe no longer has a focus. It no longer has a direction that it wants to go. I don't see anything cohesive. I see the same kind of thing happening in Marvel that we got out of DC all these years. It's not great. I haven't seen anything out of DC yet. I've seen some positive moves out of Zazlab, which are encouraging, but I don't really know what to think of it. Is it going to be Greg Berlanti? I don't believe so. And here's the nail in the coffin for me. And this is a quote that um, has also been seen around. And so let me just read this to you. Greg Berlanti, who oversees many of DC's television properties, has been loudly whispered as a possibility for the role. But, and this is a huge but, no one from Warner Brothers has actually approached his camp. Okay, well, you would think that if Zazlab wanted this guy on or knew he wanted this guy on, he would have at least approached him and started talks with him like, hey, are you interested in this kind of a job? Apparently that hasn't happened. Aside from that, Berlanti has not pursued the job. He hasn't expressed an interest in the job and insiders believe that the producer wouldn't actually be interested in going in-house and taking this kind of job. So. That's why I think there's a lot of information that's running around about this story, about Greg Berlanti, and I honestly don't think he's the guy. I don't think he's who Zazlab wants to pick, and I don't think he wants to do it either based on the information that we have, and I also don't think he's actually the person they need based on his experience in TV, but not a lot of great experience in movies. And I just want to round the video out with this. This is uh, Greg Berlanti's IMDb profile. And when we go to look at his profile, we see the things that we've also talked about. What's he known for? He's known for The Flash. He's known for Arrow. These things. What I did find interesting is he's also known for Green Lantern. I don't know if I would call that a positive or not. Now, I actually enjoyed Green Lantern. It's just one of those movies that's, in my opinion, so bad it's good. But uh, I am not, I am under no illusion that this was a great movie. And in fact, the story um, had a lot of issues. It definitely did. Um, 
I, I didn't like the fact that they sort of couldn't settle on who was the bad guy and they had the bad guy, but then they had the henchman bad guy and <laughs> I don't know. And the, then the big battle between <laughs> the henchman and Green Lantern pretty much in the middle of it gets interrupted by the actual bad guy who kills his own henchman. It, it's just kind of a storytelling disaster. I didn't enjoy it that part that much. Uh, it, it had a lot going for it early on. It had a lot of potential. But this wasn't exactly a stellar performance in when it comes to movies. And this is kind of like, this is the best movie credit that this guy has. So again, not exactly a ringing endorsement for this guy to then take over building an entire universe. All right, so that is Greg Berlanti's resume. I don't think it's super compelling for someone to say, yes, this is the guy we need to run the entire DC universe and be an executive produce all uh, over all of DC studios. And I, I, don't, I don't think he's the guy. So let me know, what do you think down in the comments below? Is Greg Berlanti actually the guy who's gonna get chosen? Is he next Kevin Feige? Or is he really just, um, you know, a, a small screen, a small screen producer and at best mediocre movie producer when it comes to movies like Green Lantern. Anyways, if you want to continue to smash the narrative, then smash the like, subscribe, and share buttons, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day. If you want to support the channel, head on over to buymeacoffee.com slash and show your support.